the Great Barrier Reef is in deep trouble as climate change and other threats mount, hindering the ability of corals to rebound from natural events, a senior scientist with the Reef's Marine Park Authority said. Unprecedented back-to-back -back mass coral bleachings resulted in 29% of the shallow water corals dying in the summer of 2015-16 and a further 20% last summer, David Wakenfeld, director of recovery at the Authority, said. Marine scientist Taylor Simpkins holds up a crown of thorn starfish near the North Opal Reef off the coast of Port Douglas, photo. Jason South Fortunately, there's no prediction of substantial mass bleachings at this point for this summer. Still. February, typically the worst month for heat stress on corals, is going to be a slightly nervous month for scientists, Dr. Wake Kenfield said. The roughly 50% death rate for the corals excludes damage done last March by Cyclone Debbie, which tore into the northern end of the southern section of the Great Barrier Reef, an area largely spared from the bleaching events. While corals have a natural ability to bounce back, the increasing frequency and severity of extreme weather made recovery harder. Every time we get impacts on the reef, they are slightly or a lot worse than previous impacts, Dr. Wakenfeld told Fairfax Media. And the question is, as we keep seeing bigger impacts, will the reef continue to be as resilient as it has been in the past? How climate change will affect the Great Barrier Reef in other parts of Australia will feature at a week-long gathering of senior scientists in Sydney for the first Australian-slash-New Zealand climate forum held in seven years. Terry Hughes, director of the ARC Centre of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies and one of the speakers at the event, said scientists were in uncharted territory when it came to predicting how fast the reef can recover. Bleaching over the previous two summer killed about half the shallow water corals on the Great Barrier Reef. Photo, up normally, after a cyclone, it takes 10 to 15 years for the fastest growing species to bounce back, Professor Hughes said. Optimistically, 50% mortality after the two recent heat waves means the glass is still half full, he said. The survivors are tougher than the corals that died, there is about a billion of them, and they are reproducing. Still an amazing experience, gliding over fields of coral at Reef off Orpheus Island, North Queensland. Photo, James Vodica Dr. Wake Enfield said tackling other stressors on corals, including from nutrient runoff from farms and the latest big outbreak of Crown of Thorns starfish, were important local efforts to help corals rebound. That's the way to give the reef the best chance to survive the global threat of climate change, he said. The reef is still a dynamic, vibrant, awesome place, Dr. Wake Enfield said. But it's in deep trouble, and at the moment, it's not heading in the right direction. Dr. Wake Enfield said the authority didn't have expertise to judge impacts from particular projects, such the plans by Indian-owned miner Adani to develop the potentially massive Carmichael mine inland from the reef. However, Professor Hughes said there's no shortage of scientific evidence that a huge new coal mine in Queensland would have a detrimental effect on the reef now more than ever as the corals struggle to recover. There's a long list of known impacts, the greenhouse gas emissions of course, but also coastal pollution from the port, dredging, the effects of ship noise and strikes on megafauna, anchor damage on seagrass beds, and the risk of ship grounding and introducing pest species in bilge water, he said. When the permit for the Adani mine was issued, we didn't fully understand just how vulnerable the GBR was to climate change. Now we do. The Sydney Gathering, organising jointly by the Australian Meteorological and Oceanographic Society and the Meteorological Society of New Zealand, will have many recent extreme weather events to consider. These include the ongoing Tasman Sea heatwave, with temperatures 4 or more degrees above average, and January's remarkable warmth in New Zealand. Country posted its largest departure from normal conditions for any month in 110 years of records. Thermometer. It's official. January 2018 was New Zealand's hottest month on record since at least 1909 according to NIWA's 7th Station Series. Thermometer. Kama Hot Springs. Nationwide mean temperature, 20.3 degrees Celsius. Hot Springs. Difference from average, plus 3.1 degrees Celsius, the largest anomaly on record, picked out twitter.com slash skaver68, Niwa Weather, at Niwa Weather, February 2, 2018.